Hey guys, it's time for art class with Mrs. O again. Today we're going to talk about doing a watercolor and crayon resist and we're going to talk about different types of lines. Um, the first thing you need to do is we are going to be making our own watercolor paint using food coloring. So in um, about six Dixie cups like this, I filled them about half full with water and then I used just regular food drops of red. So what we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna talk about some different types of lines. Um, the other supplies you're gonna need is uh, some paper. I'm gonna use Q-tips to paint with because I know not everybody has paintbrushes at home. And then um, I kind of rated my kids crayon boxes. And it doesn't matter if your crayons are broken or what, but I've got a bunch of their crayons. Um, make sure you have black. And if you want to try a trick, you can use white. But other than that, whatever colors you want to use is fine. So if we start with our paper. So what we are going to do is we're going to talk about the different types of lines. There are at least 10 types of lines that I teach my students about. There are the lines that go side to side like this. Those are called horizontal lines. So go ahead and use a crayon and see if you can draw a horizontal line that goes across your paper. When you're drawing with the crayon, you really want to make sure you're pressing nice and hard. You might have to go through it two times. We want that wax from the crayon to be nice and strong on there. There's also lines that go straight up and down. Those are vertical lines. You can choose a different color crayon. Your vertical lines can go all the way from the top to the bottom on your paper or they can just go part of the way. So we talk about horizontal lines, we talk about vertical lines, and then I also talk to the students about like the lines at Ninja Chop, diagonal lines. So pick another color crayon. We can draw some diagonal lines on your paper too. Another easy line for them to think about are dotted and dashed lines. Dotted lines are lines that kind of are made up of little dots. So it's not just polka dots all over your paper. These dots are kind of arranged in a line. And there's also dashed lines. It's the same idea, but it's like somebody took that dot and stretched it out nice and long. And you have a dashed line. As we're making these lines, I want you to make sure you're filling up your whole paper so you can repeat some lines. There's also um, what my kindergartners like to call the loop-de-loop -loop line. It's kind of the lines that go around like a roller coaster and, and cross over themselves. So your loop-de-loop -loop lines can go anywhere on your paper. Maybe they go right through some other lines. You can also do um, like a spiral or a pinwheel swirl. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna make my spiral kind of go all the way around. It gets a little bit smaller as it goes. A lot of my students really like that spiral so they could draw more than one on their paper. So far we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different types of lines. There's also a curved or wavy line. So maybe you've got some wavy lines that go back and forth like this. Maybe it's a bunch of curves put together or maybe the curves are kind of separated. Like this over here. There's also a line that I know my younger students really like. Um, we call it a free form line or a spaghetti line. And that kind of just looks like, um, like a pile of spaghetti on your plate. If you grabbed a white crayon, make sure you take and somewhere on your paper use that white crayon and I'll show you a special magic trick that it does. So I'm just drawing some horizontal lines here. I think maybe I'll do a dotted line inside my swirl. Pressing really nice and hard. The last line that I almost forgot is a zigzag line. That's like your diagonal lines, but they're kind of connected um, 
and they go back and forth. So maybe I can put a zigzag line here. And I think I will put one maybe with the white over here. So now that you've got your whole paper filled up with lots of lines, kind of choose your favorite area and you're gonna grab that black, um, that black crayon and we're gonna draw a rectangle just so that we can kind of focus on one part of it. So I'm gonna draw where I want my rectangle to be. Maybe it's more of a square that doesn't really matter too much. But that's where I'm gonna concentrate my painting in. All right, so now that we've got our black frame on top of all of our lines, we're gonna leave this outside spot all white. So it's really just our colorful lines with the white background. And we're gonna paint with our watercolor that we made out of the food coloring on this inside part. Now here where I used the white crayon at, I can show you what that will do. Put some blue paint on top of it. Your crayon will act like a wall and anywhere that crayon is will help the watercolor paint stay in that one section. If you get a whole bunch of paint on there, you can use that other end of the Q-tip to kind of clean off that extra wet spot. But as long as you pressed hard with that crayon, it should do a pretty good job of resisting your paint. So then when you're all done, you should have a box with your emphasized lines with lots of homemade watercolor. We'll see you later.